Thank you, Sister Lisa, for the really anointed music and uh, really polished singing. And we must stand. Do you need a? Um, okay. Well, yeah. I'm probably gonna. Yeah. I'm, yeah. That's good. You want to just uh, right uh, on the sides? Okay. Yeah. That'd be great. Uh, Please pass the next Amen. I'll pray before we start. Almighty oh, Father. We thank you for our meeting together, for the great music and great stories and, yes. and great teachings we've heard. All this we ask in the name of your Son, the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Amen. I had a, an outline, and I was kind of filling in stuff, and then I went down to breakfast, and I've got, got a lot of my notes from breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> from Sister Sharon and, and Brother Jeff and Brother James. So I, I wrote, after breakfast, I came up and I wrote down a bunch of notes. I've got enough material here for about maybe three or four years. <laughs> but I'll tell, tell a couple, one humorous story. I was uh, coming down to get dressed up, and I said, well, I, you know, I'm going to carry this rifle down. I better not use the elevator. <laughs> people are going to see me coming down the elevator, and they're going to, they're, they might wonder some. So I said, ah, I'm going to go down the stairs. So I went down the stairs, and I realized I went down the stairwell, which exits the hotel. So I couldn't get back in the hotel, so I exited out on the street. So I said, well, I'll just, I'll just, I walked down the street, and I won't worry about it. At least, thank God, it's Tennessee. I'm not in, I'm not in Chicago. I'm not in New York City. But the other, other, other funny thing was, I'm still wearing this. I, after, after uh, Pastor Mike's presentation, I said I'm going to go put on a coat and tie because um, when I when I give the award, I like to dress up. Um, not all the time. Go out camping or something. Coat and tie doesn't always work real good, especially around campfires with the tie. You might have some interesting stories about what happened to your tie. But anyway, I went into the bathroom, I was going to change, and all of a sudden, something came on me, and I started thinking about the poem. I had no idea that you were going to recite that poem. Wow. But I remember that poem, and I was thinking, oh. So I, I, I said, I'm going to put everything back on. I put my coat and my tie back there, and that's that's why I'm still dressed like this. <laughs> but we're in a very serious situation. It's very serious. Um, it's been very serious ever since a young couple named Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden. If you look at your parents' lives, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, they went through the Revolutionary War. That was a very bad war. People suffered. Our ancestors went through the Civil War, uh, whether they fought for the North or South. My wife's family, they all fought for the South. And my, my uh, great-grandpa, great-great-grandpa Monroe McPherson, he fought with uh, West Virginia you know, for the North. So they might have been shooting on at each other, and thank God they missed. They missed each other. So I'm going to talk about a few things. One is Amazing Grace. We talked about that song. And we're going to be talking, I'm going to give you a macro view about, about how serious it is, about where we are, and that's, that's not to be fearful. Just like if you're out camping in northern Canada, you talk about the weather, whether it's summertime or or winter time, and, and you talk about the weather. You don't want to overheat, and you don't want to freeze to death. So it's just part of living on a fallen planet. There's in the summertime, there's mosquitoes and ticks. In the winter time, it gets real cold, and it's hard to hard to find uh, stuff to eat. But that's just part of living on a fallen planet. So we don't want to be paralyzed by fear because it's been that way for thousands of years. But the, movie, the song, Amazing Grace, there's a movie called Amazing Grace. How many people have seen Amazing yes. Grace? Yes, awesome movie. Watch that movie. Because awesome. in that movie, yes. William Wilberforce, he yes. thinks his life is a failure. Because yes. he went decade after decade against slavery. They would mock him, mock him. And he devoted his life. But in the movie, kind of what they do, 
is they finally say, we're going to put this righteous legislation in a boring piece of legislation. And we found a little loophole. We're going to put it in there. And they say, who is the most boring person that we have in Parliament? The person that puts people to sleep and they get to die. And he's mumbling there. Uh, I've got this piece of legislation. And it goes like this and then like this. And then it's just there. They're all wondering what's going on. And so they vote for it. And they pulled the enemy's tactics on, on, on themselves, on the other side. And so they pass it. And that is, uh, begins, begins to get rid of the slave trade. And part of the argument against the slave trade for England said, you know, part of the politicians, oh, we cannot survive without the slave trade which was a complete lie. So you'll hear about a lot of these lies. So I'm going to talk about some stuff uh, scripturally, scripturally in the Holy Bible, in the book of Matthew 27, chapter 27, verse 46, our Lord and Savior, he cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which being interpreted from Hebrew means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me. And that's from Psalms 22, verse 1. Same opening. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I'm going to say something a little bit shocking. And of course, everything I say is from Robert Nakamoto. So as much as lines up with the Holy Word, that's great. If anything gets off track, then, then that's sometimes that helps you too. You say, well, Robert was wrong about that. And I encourage you to study. But I believe we're getting to the place where we're saying, my God, my God, why have we forsaken you? Yeah. Why have we forsaken yeah. you? Why have we thrown the Bible out of school? Why have we taken the Ten Commandments out of courthouses? It was there from the 1700s through the 1900s, and then they yeah. started taking them out. We were doing fine. Yeah. We are doing fine with the Bible in school. We're talking about, you know, Sister Joanne was talking, was that Joanne talking about how the big crisis was somebody was smoking a cigarette behind a high school? Yeah. And that's the big crisis of the year. If that was a high school today, people, they would say, this is, this is like almost like being in heaven. Almost like being in heaven. Another passage is from the book of Jeremiah. I heard this in a sermon about 20 years ago. And I can remember, I can remember parts of that sermon. But the line, the preacher at that sermon said, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 20, the harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. The drug addict is not saved. The prostitutes are not saved. The humans, people in Buddhism are not saved. People in Islam are not saved. People that were formerly Christians are not saved. We've got churches in apostasy and churches that are a reprobate. We're battling all this stuff. And so where it's got to the point where when you look at it logically, if you just look at the finances, we talked about gold and silver, paper money. If you look at the finances, the way our government's spending money, it does not equal a happy future, just money. If you look at what's happening with the medicine, with the medical pharma pharmacies, with the vaccines, all that stuff. When I was growing up, I was born in 1960. When I was growing up, I, I never met a person who was allergic to food. I didn't know anybody with autism. I didn't know anybody with ADHD. Even, even some of the students that were classified as retarded, they weren't that, they weren't that stupid. You know, they could... They can still do stuff, you know. Maybe they're not going to be a brain surgeon, but they can they could get a good job and live a happy life. It wasn't anything like this where people were balled up and couldn't talk, and people would eat a peanut and drop over dead. That that did not exist. Mm -hmm. So where do we want to be? On a human common sense level, we want to take America back, back to the way it used to be. Uh, there's some bad things that were in the past, and that's, but we want to go back to the good things. 
on a spiritual level, what do we want to see? We want to see one church, one faith, one baptism, one people under God, and God we trust. We want to be have churches in one with the Holy Spirit, preachers like uh, Samuel Dokes preaching the Word of God in truth and power, and that's where we want to get to. So we want to have that one nation under God. And so I'm going to, there's a lot of ways to get there. And people have all kinds of ministries. One time I was working on a project, and there was just a handful of us, and um, they were saying, uh, oh, there's these people, they're, they're just really bankrolled. They got big money, and I'm, I'm sitting here looking at this out the driveway, and there's all these old cars there. I said, well, if we're big money, I want some new shoes or something. <laughs> new shoes and socks. But all of us, you know, there's just, and then, let's see, we were well-paid agents of some organization. I'm thinking, man. And I'm thinking, man, you know, there's just nobody here helping us. You know, we don't have any, our finances are just really small. And I said, man, there's nobody else here. And I, I was, you know, I was praying about it. And then the thought came back, well, I'll just keep going. And we were successful. And, it, and then I, what I learned from that is we didn't need anybody else. We didn't need a big budget. Uh, we didn't need to be well-funded agents of some secret organization. And so there's many ministries. Uh, there's ministries like to children, ministries to orphans, uh, feeding, feeding people, helping people with homelessness, uh, mentoring young people. But then one of the ministries I'm going to talk about is music ministry because we've got some incredible amount of talent, um, incredible amount of knowledge here. So I'm going to talk about specifically how music, music is very, I almost, when I was thinking about this, I was thinking it's almost like a crab. Like you think about an alchemist of old, which uh, became chemistry, and of course alchemy sometimes that can go off into a, into a dark place, but, so maybe alchemy is not a good example, but it's like um, maybe being a farmer, being a farmer. For instance, you've gotta know your soils, you gotta know when to plant, you gotta know when to harvest, you got to know what to plant where. You got to know how to, what, where to put the crops, etc. So it takes a lot of work. So when you go into music, it does take work. Um, just learning an instrument. Some people can pick it up real fast. Other people, you have to work at it. But um, Tim Davis, I met Tim Davis. I'll use Tim Davis as an example. I met him like 10 years ago. And Tim is a great songwriter. He's an awesome guitar player. He's a really good singer. But Tim Davis last yesterday was much better than Tim Davis 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. OK, so he was, he was an amazing guitar player. I wish I could play guitar like him. Yeah. But uh, he's much better. Something, something is just really, and that's all of you. I've heard all of you. <laughs> You know, not all of you, but I've heard some of you for years, and you're, you're better. Whether it's uh, Sister Lydia or, or Brother Gino, you're, you're better than you were when I first met you. Uh, you were always good, but keep that working. I want you to think now. Now, I said music is powerful, and so that, that can be a, a subjective statement. But I want you to think back to when you were, like, in grade school. And I want you to think about how many sermons you can remember from grade school. Now think about how many sermons you can remember from your 20s. Okay. Now, how many sermons can you remember from last month? If somebody came up and said, first Sunday of the 1st of January, give me the sermon, give me the notes, give me the topic. Now, how many songs can you remember from grade school? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. How many songs can you remember from your 20s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those of us who played music, I've, I've got maybe a thousand songs up here. I don't, I don't even know. And some of the songs I've played, I've, I've forgotten. But if somebody starts them, I'll remember them. Yeah. I'll remember them. I, like if somebody comes up to me and says, hey, can you play this? I go, ah. Uh, and they start hitting a few notes, it'll all come back. 
I'll come back. So music is very powerful because it puts you into receptive mode. It can program you. So yes. it's going to yes. make people, you can program them, but also as you remember it, just like the Grandpa Jones song, you remember it. You remember, you know, like, uh, remember uh, Ferguson, Ferguson. So, sweet lips. Yeah, sweet lips. You might not be able to, if somebody said, hey, can you remember uh, history class from, you know, 1972? No, I can't remember it. But can you remember this song, like Battle of New Orleans, that song, 1814, we took a little trip. <laughs> yeah, so music is very powerful. It can put you in a, in a, in a receptive state. Now, as I say, it's very powerful. You've got to be careful. It's like having a, I, I was watching this chainsaw uh, video, and this gentleman was talking about maintaining chainsaws, and I have to start feeling really, really bad because he was talking about stuff I would never do to my chainsaw. <laughs> and then he started, he lives out west, so he was making fun of us on the east coast about how we have this little tiny chainsaws. And he's got like this 40 inch blade. <laughs> and, and, but, what, but whatever, music is like a chainsaw, it's a powerful tool. So you got to make sure that you're using it right. Because yes. uh, as I use that analogy, music can also turn on you. Yes. It can yeah. turn yes. on you. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful what we yes. come out of our mouths. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Come on. I remember back when I played secular music. I I, I heard these ACDC songs. And I thought, well, that's some really neat guitar playing. And I start, and all of a sudden, I I just couldn't play it um, because it was just it was just so evil. So I'm just going to go over some of the things. Uh, music is very powerful. So one thing, I'm just going to go down through these topics. And these are things, there's always theory and then reality. Sometimes, um, sometimes you have total control when you're playing independently. Like if I'm playing all by myself, I can, I can do all kinds of stuff. And I don't, I don't have to worry about... Um, what I'm doing, but I, if I'm playing with other people, if somebody's at a skill level way below me, then I have to think about what kind of chords am I going to use, what kind of song am I going to play. If I'm playing with uh, somebody that knows like seven chords, then I'll just pick out like three or four songs. If I'm playing with somebody really good and they're going to play one part, I can just do a doodle, you know, just dabble along and just kind of kind of follow them. So um, as you go through this, there's reality. You have to adjust. If you're playing in a, like an Anglican church or a Catholic church, it might be different than a Pentecostal church. Maybe not. Maybe not, because there's, there's some overlap. Um, one thing, so I'm going to go through this list. One thing is volumes. You don't want to play so quiet that no one can hear you. But you don't want to be playing so loud that it sounds that you're drowning out the jet engines at the airport. <laughs> so just just use common sense because you don't yeah. want to hurt people's ears. Yeah. Uh, you don't want to you don't want to blast out people. Right. And and as I say, volumes uh, that comes that comes down to mixing. Like James Roberts been over there mixing stuff. You don't want to have like your your um, drums at one level and your acoustic guitar down and then your bass because if, if, you're, if you're not mixed right you can be the best band in the world and you'll sound terrible. Terrible. Uh, along with that is tuning. Make sure you're in tune. Make sure you're in tune. I, I know this one great guitar player, he's just awesome, but a lot of times he'll start playing with an untuned guitar. Oh, man, this, this, so it's always, he's an awesome guitar player. But, Sometimes it doesn't sound all that good. It just doesn't tune. Another thing is frequencies. This may be something you have not heard about, but there's a controversy about frequencies, yes. about 440 versus yep. 432. Yep. 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 Now, if you yep. go somewhere and they're all tuned to 440, then that's the way it is. But if, if you're just by yourself or just with your little group, you can put your frequencies at 432. There's also the Baroque frequency of 415, and so just study it. Yep. It's one of those things. Uh, lyrics. Okay, remember, people yes. are going to remember these lyrics. Yes. 
So like amazing grace, how sweet the sound to save a wretch like me. So great songs, whether they're contemporary or hymns, you can use them for sermons, but you've got to make sure that what's coming out, make it as accurate as you can, yes, yeah. as yes. accurate as you can. Now, personally, some songs I'll, I'll look at, I like the song, but you know, maybe there's a lyric or two that I don't like. I'll just replace the words. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> or sometimes I'll add a word in. Nobody sometimes even knows. Um, talked a little bit about um, about polish. Um, do do the best you can. Um, God gives us different different gifts. Sometimes people can sing real good, but they can't play an instrument real good. Sometimes they can play instruments good, they can't sing very good. Uh, we're all we're all at different stages, uh, but just always do your best. Uh, practice as much as you can. Um, there's an advice, um, I forget the gentleman's name, he's a big guitar or, uh, mandolin player in Nashville, but his advice, he's a brother, he's one of, his last name's White, his brother is a member of the Birds, he was Clarence killed. White? Clarence White? Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah. His advice, he's a great mandolin player, he says, if, when you get busy, just, just practice like 15 minutes a day. Yep. If that's all you can do, just, just get out there and practice 15 minutes a day. Okay, presentation. Um, you, most of you guys, you, most of y'all are doing better than me. So I'm just, I'm just preaching to the choir. I'm preaching to a choir about advice. Like, um, it's like a college professor teaching economics to multimillionaires. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. But anyway, anyway presentation, presentation. We heard some ideas on presentation. You know, just think about your song list. Uh, Sister Lydia has some amazing advice on that. Um, just get on her website, listen to some of her podcasts. But just how do you present stuff? And number seven um, or is uh, introductions. Um, Sister Sharon had a really good idea about use a scripture to introduce songs. Yeah. At, at church, uh, a couple Sundays ago, we were playing the song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. I, I love that song. But before we played it, they, they told the story about the hymn. And the lady that wrote it, her she had gone blind. She was going blind. And um, she had married a rich husband, but he had left her when she went blind. And that song was, I don't, I don't know if she wrote it while she was going blind or after she was blind, but Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus was, was written by her. One, another point is humility. Um, one good thing about a lot of the country music people versus other genres is they're more down to earth. And I think that's carried on into Christian music it's just uh, don't get a don't get a big head. I, my personal saying is, if, I know if I get a big head, it's it's not going to survive 24 hours. I know God Almighty is going to pop my big head, <laughs> and and something bad is going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, I, yeah, I know something bad is going to happen because you get to you get to thinking thinking. No, so just be humble, because uh, you never know. You never know. You might have a music video. You might have a song that goes viral, and, and all of a sudden you you're making more than five dollars a year off your music or something. <laughs> but just be humble, and I I think uh, Joanne Cash and Johnny Cash are a good example of that. Is that they weren't like uh, checking into motel and. You know, think about M and M's and some of the rock stars, or you know, I don't want any red M and M's or something, or all these horror stories. No, don't don't be like that. And, and that can be for preachers or anybody in ministry, or it can be for parents or business leaders. You know, you just don't want to be arrogant. And I think Colonel Ferguson. I feel I I rejoice that he was the deadliest one of the deadliest marksmen in the British Army, and. During one of the battles, he, there, the legend is uh, 
there's a debate about whether it's uh, the Polish count or General Washington, but he had a high-ranking American officer, one of the generals in his sight, and he said, I just couldn't pull the trigger. Something, something just, I just couldn't pull the trigger. So I don't, I don't talk bad about Colonel Ferguson because I, I don't know, you know, maybe God just moved on his heart not to do it. But, um, but just, just be humble. Just look to somebody like, you know, Sister Joanne. You can go up there and talk to Sister Joanne, and she's not too good to talk to you or take a picture with you or, or sign stuff. So just think about that. Another one is, uh, is physical fitness uh, for musicians. Sometimes you can get really absorbed because you're, especially those people who work and also do music. And if you're really into music, sometimes you might be practicing like literally four or five hours a day. People, you know, there's 15 minute a day people, and there's a 15 minute a week people in musician practice, but there's some who do four or five hours a day. Just just watch out for your health, and that, that means, uh, you know, just watch what you eat and everything. Uh, number, the other one is, uh, another number is Holy Spirit. Be open to the Holy Spirit. Uh, sometimes I'll be going up to play a song and something will say, no, don't play that song, play this song, and yeah. I'll be thinking, mm -hmm. I have not played that song for years. And I, I think I remember the chords, <laughs> but I just play that song and it'll, it'll turn out the other song was wrong and that song was right. Uh, okay, another one, uh, the Sharpie, if, if you're selling CDs, uh, Take a sharpie. You can sign notes to people. Give autographs. I, when I when I buy CDs, sometimes uh, when I can remember, I try to get autographs um, because it just means something. And if you're giving it as a gift, like if I buy if I buy a CD from Sister Lydia, um, I give if I give it as a gift. Sometimes if you can ask the person, hey, put this person's name, and could you write a note of encouragement? And those, those mean a lot. I, I do the same thing on books, too. I try to get uh, uh, autographs. Next one is family. Um, just be thinking about your family, because one thing that can derail your ministry is your, your family. So just do the best you can. None of us are perfect. Um, I remember I used to think my parents weren't that good parents. And then uh, I remember when our first son was born, and this little boy is looking at me with these eyes, and it's like a videotape. He's videotaping me, and I'm thinking, "Oh man, I guess my parents weren't that bad." <laughs> <laughs> this is, and then then after about the first after the first uh, 24 hours, I start thinking, "This is not easy." Oh, yeah. And then after the first decade, you say, "Yeah, it's still not easy." Okay. And then after the first couple decades. Oh, it's still not easy. <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah. So it's, it's just hard. But take care of your children, because ideally, uh, I really love the song, um, Pass the Flame. Keeper of the Flame. Keeper of the Flame. I love that song, because we're contending with the faith earnestly delivered to the saints. And so we don't know when Jesus is coming back. And I always tell people, train your children so if they had to meet the beast of revelation next week, they'd be ready for it. Yep. But train your children that if the beast of revelation does not show up for a thousand years, they'll be ready for it. And that goes back to, to um, back to uh, passing, passing on the faith. Also, uh, some of you travel like uh, Brother Brandon. Um, David, David, Brother David is talking about traveling. Just uh, you know, keep plugged in with your families. You know, there's an old joke. It's, it's cheaper to call your wife than pay alimony. So, <laughs> so call your wife. Uh, send, send, send flowers. Flowers. Never give. Flowers. Women love flowers. You know, bring home gifts. Bring home gifts for your children. Uh, bring home gifts for your wife. You know, sometimes when you're traveling, and that—that's whether you're traveling as a musician or as part of as part of another career. 
just uh, keep up with your family. And the other, other reason is, at a certain point, if your family situation gets bad enough, it can really damage your ministry. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it can, it can happen to anybody, but we just do the best you can. It's just like uh, practicing. God gives us different gifts and situations. Finances, uh, think of ways that you can finance your music. One way is ask for uh, prayer. I, when I was going to get a violin, my, my wife was a little bit worried because I just bought a mandolin. She said, oh, no, you're going to buy another instrument. You don't even play violin. I, I said, well, we'll pray. and Maybe we'll get one for free. And then like a week later, I got one for free. <laughs> so uh, there's, this, there's this guy. He's, he play, I think it was Dirk. I can't remember Dirk's last name. But he's got this fabulous collection. And it's worth millions of dollars. And most of it, he, he got it for free. Or he just goes around looking like what people are going to throw away. And people call him and say, I'm going to throw this away. But just think about how you can do that. And also, uh, don't be afraid to invest in your music. Whether it's, whether it's going to training or taking lessons or buying a good instrument. I, I know personally, like for, I have a mid-grade mandolin, but I was, I was playing um, one of my friends, he's got like a $3,000 mandolin. And so it's the same person playing the same style, but I sound much better on his than on, on mine. So don't be afraid, uh, you know, don't uh, use common sense, but if you buy a good guitar, it'll last you, it'll last you for decades. Yeah. Uh, but also, as I say, uh, finances, be thinking ways, you know, to, to uh, get, get money out of your music. Now, some of us, I just play as a hobby. Um, I'm not really getting money from my music per se. But for those of you who are, especially, I know some of you, uh, look at teaching. Teaching. Um, I think um, some of you are teaching. But look at that, because that can be a real good bedrock. You can give, like, um, I, take, I still take uh, fiddle lessons, and my fiddle teacher, he makes enough money off lessons to live on. And then he can go out, and he plays gigs, he plays on weekends. Um, so look at that. Look at teaching. A lot of you have an incredible amount of knowledge. Like I don't, I don't even know, I don't even know the names of what you all know. So you got an incredible amount of knowledge. So pass that on. And then, then for those of us who don't have that knowledge, you can still teach. Um, you know, maybe maybe at church or something. Okay, another another lesson, and this is just uh, something I've learned have a manual backup that if there's if the power goes out. So if some of you uh, sing by tracks, uh, for that I would look at getting something battery powered, you know, just something old fashioned that if you show up, because sometimes something can go wrong with that sound, so have a manual backup. And we talked about investing, investing in, in yourself. Um, Music takes money, you know, just like guitars, guitar picks, guitar chords, or fiddles, or keyboards. But just, you know, invest, invest as you can, um, and just look at it as an investment. And some some people out there, their hobby is like fishing, and so they might have, they might be catching five thousand dollar fishes. Because when you figure out how many fish they catch compared to how much money they spend on the boat and stuff like that, those can be expensive. So think about invest, investing uh, in it. And just like Brother Tim, Brother Tim had a great idea, Tim Burton, about how he just takes safe points off his credit cards and uses that. So think about how you can pull that back in. And then prayer. Always pray, um, pray about what you're playing. And again, reality is reality. Sometimes when you get out and if you're helping somebody, you don't have that much control. But if you're totally on your own or you're in charge, pray about about music you're playing. And then look look at the just again to recap recap 
music is very powerful. You just think of all the songs you can remember. You know, all you musicians. Brandon, how many songs do you know? Oh, like a lot. A lot. Yeah, a lot. A lot. Because I can, I can, back when I played secular music, I knew songs from different bands. And I, I know, you know, all these other songs, like Old West songs and Irish songs. And, I know all these songs, but then, then you go back to just the church hymns. How many church hymns do you know, uh, brother, brother Tom? How many, how many church hymns have you got memorized? <laughs> yeah, yeah, just all of us, all of us. We got all these songs memorized, and people can remember those songs. People yes. can remember those songs. So those lyrics are very powerful. And my analogy is, music is kind of like an airstrike. If you're out fighting a battle, the airstrike comes in and drops the load, and then the infantry comes in, and the infantry is kind of like the preacher coming in. And the music is kind of what sets the atmosphere, sets the anointing. The anointing. So, for instance, the music this morning, that would have been great for a church because it's very impactful. And then what Brother Mark did, that's really awesome because... People, they can remember. If you can start moving things around, it's I call it the puppet show. You use like theater, theater, theater. Theater is very powerful. Musicals are very powerful. Think about musicals you see, and you can still remember lyrics. You can still remember lines. So theater is very, very good too. So in the videos, music videos like the one that Brother Erskine had. That's very powerful, very powerful. Uh, Sister Lydia has some great, great music videos. They're very powerful, very powerful. And as I look at Sister Lydia, there's another thing. God calls us to play different music. Um, some people play like blues or rock or bluegrass gospel, rap gospel uh, was incredible about Erskine. I think Erskine plays everything. <laughs> he plays everything from like disco to bluegrass. <laughs> what's, what's funny about Erskine is he'll show up and a lot of people think he's a country country gospel guy. So yeah, this, this black man, he's, he plays country gospel. And Erskine, Erskine does play country gospel. Yeah. And he plays it very well, but he plays it so well that people think he can't do anything else. <laughs> Most people can't do that, they, but Erskine can. Yeah. But your music can help people, because I and you're helping people too, because I'll, I'll bring up another thing. Some people are addicted to certain types of music. It may be rap music, it may be heavy metal, it may be disco music. And your music, whatever style that you're playing, that style can help. Um, I used to, and I'll call out Sister Lydia again, I used to have this, I just like to listen to Eagle songs. And I said, well, I, don't, I don't know about some of this stuff. And, <laughs> you know, some of the lyrics, but I really like to listen to it. And, and then I was listening to one of uh, Sister Lydia's songs, and uh, I noticed that after that, it helped me not want to listen to Eagles music. Oh, wow. So, Sister, Sister Lydia, she has some great harmonies on there yeah. and some great songs. And so I said, well, you know, I don't, I don't need to listen to them. So, praise the Lord. So, whether you're playing rap music or uh, like Erskine, Erskine's playing everything disco music, psychedelic music, <laughs> gospel music, or playing bluegrass or southern gospel or whatever, you're you can be a transition out of out of like A C D C. Um, Brother James is talking about he set Christian lyrics to Beatles songs. Beatles songs. Some people love the Beatles, they're addicted to Beatles music. <laughs> but so if you can play Beatles songs with Christian lyrics, that'll help people get out of that. So, in, in closing, I, I went over a lot of stuff. It's uh, your, what you're doing as a musician or as a support person. Sometimes uh, it's good if you pair up in business. They say have a dreamer paired up with a non-dreamer. Somebody who thinks big 
with uh, pair them up with a nuts and bolts person. Because a dreamer can come up with these crazy ideas. And I, th I think of, of Brother Gino. Brother Gino has these ideas. We're going to do this. And he's like, oh, I don't know about that, Gino. <laughs> Gino, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you a story. Gino had this prayer call and said, oh, you know, I'm kind of busy, but I'll do the prayer call, but I'm, I'm really busy, and I'm, I'm just going to do it until the election's over. And then I got up November 4th, and the election wasn't over. So we're still praying. <laughs> and by the way, it's open to all CSMI artists. It's Monday through Friday. So yeah. every day it does just Monday. And no, it's, it's every day, Monday through Friday. So and I, I started eight Central Time. Yeah. yeah wow. Eight thirty Central Time. And I started thinking if we had a eight thirty Eastern Time. Eight thirty to nine thirty Seven thirty Central. Our side. You know, I started thinking, would I still be here? Because I actually had COVID back in October. But, and then Brother Michael had COVID, so we're, we're getting almost 50% of the people in the prayer call had COVID. <laughs> but we both, we're both still here. Oh, yeah. You're good. You're good. So what, you, what you're doing is very important, whether it's running sound, yeah. um, just in all these skills. I remember I was in Iraq, and Charlie Daniels came to our base in Iraq. And they, the chaplain said, Robert, Sergeant Nakamoto, can you set up the sound system? And so I, I knew, you know, I've been setting up sound systems for myself and helping other people. So I knew, hey, Charlie Daniels has this. He's going to come in with this. He's going to want it this way. And then I looked at what we had. And what we had was not the normal Charlie Daniels setup. <laughs> <laughs> what we had was what uh, Robert Nakamoto was used to working with. So I, said, oh. so I just set it up, and we started getting out the duct tape and putting everything down. And his, his guys got off the helicopter and walked up to the stage, and their mouth kind of fell open. And they said, I can't believe how good this is. Wow. So, oh, wow. Yeah, they said, man, this is the best we've had. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. yeah. <laughs> and we talked about the song Amazing Grace. Uh, I got to play Amazing Grace with Charlie Daniels. Wow. wow. Really? Yeah, I got, to, I got the picture on my desk at work. I got to play, I got to play an instrumental on, on uh, Amazing Grace. On a, wow. On a, on a, I forget Mr. Brown's first name. He's a real good guitar player, but he let me use his Fender Stratocaster. Wow. So I got to use uh, his uh, Fender Stratocaster. Oh. So a lot of knowledge here. What you're doing is important, whether, and you may switch roles. Like one time you may be the sound person, just like Brother David. David's working as a roadie, sound guy, front man, backup man. So all the skills you can get. And all your all your stuff's important. And then some as a family member, um, you know, helping your musician. Um, family members are very important. Pass on what you can to your children. I love what you're doing with your sons. Yes. I have uh, three sons that can play guitar, and, and really only one stuck with it a lot. And that's but he's a very anointed guitar player. So I'm gonna gonna close here. All of our ministries, we never know how they're going to turn out. Um, uh, there's a famous story about a man that had a ministry, had one convert, one convert. He left the ministry. He was so discouraged. His wife died. It was in Africa. So he left the, he left the ministry. And um, one day, one of his children was going through England, and they were holding a big revival. It was a preacher from Africa. And his one convert, he had one little boy that was converted. His one convert started playing churches, and he came to England and was preaching a big revival. I was, I was actually converted by the preaching of, a, I think, a guy was in Kenya. He, he was in Appalachia in, in Ohio. So the reason why I say that, what you're doing is important, it's powerful, and even, even if after 70 years, you've had one convert, one convert, everything was worth it. Yep. One convert. Right. One person right. saved from the yeah. fires of yes. hell, yeah. one person there in eternal life. Yeah. And chances are you cannot just have one convert. Because one convert is going to probably convert more than one person. So all you guys, you guys um, have just fantastic 
man, fantastic gifts on guitar um, and piano. I love I love the piano playing. I love the singing and the harmonies y'all had this morning. All the all the stuff. So there's so much talent in this room. So I know I know all of you are going to have more than one convert, but but it's all worth it. And so Brother James talked about the great harvest. We know things are bad. They've been bad. There's always there's always a crisis. Uh, Brother Johnny Cash has a good book going by or a good song going by the book. It's from 1992 or so, but it's a great song. Listen to it. It's got great instrumentals, but it's, it's about the book of Revelation. It's going by the book. So your, your craft, your skills, God has anointed you. God has given you all this talent. I'm just amazed at the talent I heard. Um, just people playing the drums, percussion, switching over guitar and keyboard. It's just amazing. So I know you've got all that talent. And even if it's even if it's just a handful of converts, it's still worth it. But I, I would suspect some of you are going to have more converts than that, just like uh, Brother Brandon. And that's a real good story there, because you don't know. Your song might be the key to somebody not committing suicide, might be the key to somebody not drug overdosing, might be the key. It may. It may be in the nursing home when they're 80 years old or 90 years old or 100 years old and all of a sudden they hear one of those songs mm -hmm. and they, they, the memories come back and that's what gets them into the kingdom. So you're, you never know what your songs are going to do, what your songs are, there's just no, no, no uh, limit to it. For the Great Welsh Revival, it was started started uh, by, a, by a coal miner, and he said that he wanted to preach, so he prayed, and he said he felt God say that within 30 days you'll have 100,000 converts. He was a coal miner, who was not a preacher, so he asked he asked if he could preach, and so he preached. I think his name was Evan Roberts. Right. Yes. Evan Roberts. And so they, the pastor said, after the Wednesday meeting, you can give a sermon. If anybody wants to stay after church, you can give this, you can give uh, the sermon. So he gave his first sermon, and then he, he started preaching. And I forget, it was within a month, whatever time period God had told him, they had that 100,000 converts. Mm -hmm. And so that kept spreading. So there's a song in the Welsh Revival, Here is Love. Here is love. Delmagaria. Yeah. Do you know that one? Yes. Okay. We're going to um, ask ask uh, Sister Lisa to sing the song, and then we'll close with that song, and then I'll say a prayer to get us all. Some of you are staying. They're going to enjoy the mountains, and others so are going to hit the road. But go ahead. Talking about the power of one voice in one of those meetings in the Welsh Revival, the church was packed out, packed out to the rafters. And there was silence in the church, and one voice, whoever that was, began to sing this song, and the entire church, and it fell. This is the Welsh, and I hope nobody here speaks Welsh, because <laughs> it goes, Dama gavri an fel yamorit, tos tiriai thai fel an kli, twas ag bawi pi amaru, marwi bronid bawi. i 
streets of God's mercy flow the best and gracious time. Grace and love like mighty rivers pour incessant from above. And heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed again. So that was very beautiful and that song was after midnight they've been preaching and all of a sudden that song rang out and that song is still going still going it's a beautiful song it'd be beautiful with strings or piano or in a musical maybe because it's public domain yes but that's a good thing musicians remember public domain songs you need fillers on your album I mean, you can really jazz them up like some of the people here did but I'm going to pray. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I, I told people, even if the whole conference was a clunker, it was worth it just to hear Sister Joanne's stories. <laughs> even, if, even if everything everything else was bad, just hearing those stories about her and Johnny Cash and the story about the umbrella and the story about the airplane and about her being safe from drugs, it was all worth it. And of course, I just heard so so much great music. And just man, just the talent that's here, you know. And it's good. You, a lot of you know, some of us are older, but a lot of you young guys, man, yeah. yeah, man, you know. I'm just thinking, you know, look at look at you guys. You know, 30, 40 years from now, uh, people are going to say, yeah, he was real good when he was 20 or 30, but man, he's better now. So yeah, keep trucking. <laughs> but I'll pray. Yeah. I have an intense and urgent prayer request. Okay. I only a few minutes ago, it's the emergency room down in Florida. My 32-year-old son is in Thank you. 